Welcome to Life Devotions, and thank you for joining me today. Jesus abides in me. Wow, now that is something worth thinking about. And I know with our natural mind, we would struggle. But these things that our minds cannot comprehend can be known by the Holy Spirit. As it would say in 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9, what eye has not seen, what ear has not heard, what has not entered into the heart of man that God has prepared for those who love him has been revealed to us by the Holy Spirit. Those things we have freely received from him in Christ. The Holy Spirit reveals to us the greatest, most wonderful glory of Christ being God at the Father's right hand is that He can come and live inside of us by His Spirit. And He is the only one. His Spirit is the only Spirit that has the right to live in us because He has purchased that right with His blood. Do you not know 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20 that your body is not your own but has been bought at a price? Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of life in Christ. Oh my goodness, when you get this into your thoughts, if you meditate on these scriptures I share with you, you will never again let the devil harass you and act like he has a right to torment you when Jesus with his blood has not only shut him out, but revealed himself in. Oh, hallelujah, I am so grateful that I know Jesus is the only one that has the right to live in me. No other spirit has any right, so I will not be threatened because God himself will rebuke the enemy if he dare come near me. My body is not my own, it is the temple of my Father's Holy Spirit who, <coughs> who reveals all of Jesus in me. Oh, glory, glory to God in the highest. Friends, let the Holy Spirit so comfort you today. If you've been tormented or afflicted with evil, you go ahead and take the scripture and say evil, you have no right <coughs> and I will not give you access to me. I resist you by faith in Christ and I know you will flee because you have no authority here. Jesus shed his blood. Friends, it is a symbolic image that you can get out of Exodus chapter, what is it, 12, where you see the children of Israel taking the blood of the lamb on the doorpost and lintel of their house. And when judgment came, it gained no access because the blood said they have been redeemed. The blood, hallelujah, of Jesus Christ gives every spirit get out, leave them alone. They belong to me. I've bought them with my blood. Believe it in Jesus' name. Amen. Here in 1 John chapter 3, verse 24, he who keeps his commandments abides in him and he in him. And by this we know that he abides in us by the spirit whom he has given. Friends, the Lord Jesus Christ, this is the great wonder. Remember in John 14, Jesus said, greater works than these I will do, for I go to the Father. Whatever you ask the Father, I will do. First he says, the works that I do, you will do also, and greater ones than these, because I go to the Father. Whatever you ask the Father in my name, I will do it, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. What Ever you ask in my name, I will do it. The wonder of Jesus being at the right hand of the Father is that he can now come and live in us to be in us what he is in heaven. As it says in 1 John 4 verse 19, or is it verse 18, that as he is with the Father, so are we on the earth. Friends, this is the glory of Christ accomplished work that he can now live in us the life he lives in heaven. John, 4, John 16 verse 14, he says, in the spirit whom I will send to you, 
from the Father. He will take of what is mine and unveil it, reveal it in you. And when I said, he will take of what is mine, all that is the Father's is mine. You get these thoughts into your heart and realize that out of the riches of the glory that he has in heaven, he gives the Holy Spirit to enable us to begin to receive him. You need the Holy Spirit to help you understand these things. You cannot just reason it with your mind. It's not just a, a, a mind ascent. No, it is a heavenly revelation. The Holy Spirit reveals the life of the Son of God in us. And as we then are rooted, as Ephesians 3, 14 through 21 teaches, in His love, we begin to realize together with all saints, what is the height, the depth, the breadth, the length of His love, and become filled with the fullness of God. Oh my goodness, my goodness, friends. You begin to think on these things. So let me take you for a moment to 2 Corinthians chapter 13, it's one of the last chapters of that amazing book. Verse five, 2 Corinthians 13, verse five, examine yourselves as to whether you are in the faith. Test yourself. Do you not know yourself that Jesus Christ is in you unless indeed you are disqualified? But I trust you will know that we're not disqualified. I trust you can see in us that Christ lives in us, enabling and empowering us to live this life that comes from heaven and to give you its graces and blessings. Oh, my dear friends, examine yourself that you are in the faith. The just shall live by faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. For those who come to him must believe that he exists and is a reward of those who diligently seek him. Hebrews 11, 6, 7. Friends, you need to realize the wonder of Christianity is Christ in us. Without Christ, Christianity is not possible and does not work. Peter says in Mark chapter 10, who then can be saved? And Jesus said, what is impossible with man is possible with God. Friends, without Christ coming in us, Christianity doesn't work. That's why if you just try to be a Christian, do a Christian, sing a Christian, talk a Christian, act a Christian, you will more and more become frustrated because you realize I can't do it. What these people expect of me, I can't meet up to their standards. I can't act like them, talk like them, think like them, be like them. That's right, you can't, but I can't either. No, I cannot be a Christian. No, Christ in me is me being a Christian, but only through Christ in me. Outside of Christ, I'm just as human as any other man. In Christ, I'm a new creation, born of God, no more in condemnation. Here in His grace I stand. It's the wonder of Christianity is Christ Himself. He Himself is the wonder of Christianity. And friends, there can be a real challenge at times in our lives when we have allowed our lives to be separated from Him because we've allowed our affections to be hijacked. And the Apostle Paul was having to talk to the Galatian church about this. This little six chapter booklet is one of the best to meditate on. And he says in verse 19 of chapter four, my little children for whom I labor in birth again until Christ is formed in you. You see, I find this very powerful. Paul says, I feel the pain of your separation and the conflict between us when I know we're one, when I know that the spirit that's in me, you have received, but now all of a sudden you're acting like you don't know me, like I'm a stranger to you because somebody else came to you with some other kind of idea and thought about Christ, but it's not Christ because now it's separated us and I am feeling the pain and I am I'm, I'm yearning in me and groaning for us to reconnect, for us to reconnect. And 
listen, my dear friends, without the daily renewing of the inward man that 2 Corinthians 4.16 talks about, we all can wither on the vine. Come on now, listen to me. We all can wither on the vine. It's not that the vine is not springing forth with the virtue of no life, but it's we needing to drink it in, feed upon it. Jesus said in, in, in John 6, verse 35, whoever comes to me will never hunger. Whoever believes in me will never thirst. Verse 57, as the living Father sent me, and I live because of him, whoever feeds on me will live because of me. I tell you, I feed upon him daily. Daily I get up early in the morning and his spirit renews me inwardly in that conscious knowledge of his wonderful cleansing flood of his blood and the communion that he provides with the Father through the knowledge of himself. And I'm able to lift my hands in worship and praise as it says in Lamentations, let us come to God with our hearts and our hands lifted high. Oh, mount up with your heart to God and your hands to God as the spirit of life in Christ is refreshed in you every morning and you begin to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise as you're inwardly renewed and enlightened and illuminated in the knowledge of him, which is the wonder of the Holy Spirit cleansing you with the blood and reviving and restoring and renewing you. You see, listen, friends, spiritual forgetting is like feeling hungry. Spiritual remembering is like eating. Friends, I can have a tummy full of food and not have any consciousness of hunger, but give me a couple of hours and the consciousness of hunger will come back. And unless I eat again, it won't go away. And I tell you the truth, so it is spiritually. We only live in communion with the Father because we're constantly being renewed in the knowledge of the Son in us. He is the new life giving way into the Father. And we need to be daily renewed in the human man. We need to constantly be restored in our union with him. And we will never be able to live in his likeness if his spirit does not liberate us from his in the, his indwelling spirit does not liberate us from that old nature of sin and re, and renews us in knowledge after the image of him for whom we were created and through whom and to whom we were created read second uh, Corinthians 3 17 18 and, Gal- and Colossians 3 verse 10 friends, I am living in this renewing. I did not understand this many, many years ago. I didn't understand it. But then I read Colossians chapter 3, which is right here. Colossians chapter 3, verse 10. I read this. And having put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. And I read Titus chapter 3. Here it is. It says there, um, but according to his mercy, he saved us through the washing of number one, regeneration, becoming spiritually alive and renewing of the Holy Spirit. That's two different things. Number one, you're spiritually made alive to God through Christ Jesus coming into you, uh, who is our life. But then through his life-giving spirit, we're constantly renewed. And if I don't keep being renewed, just like going hungry, I will wither on the vine. And you're not to wither on the vine. No, my loving friends. You're to be renewed daily. Daily, daily in the inward man. Renew the knowledge. Again, Colossians, please stay with me here for just a second longer. Colossians, where are you? Here you are. Colossians 3.10, put on the new man who is renewed. Put on the new man. Talk about clothing yourself. Every morning I get dressed. Put on the new man every day, but being renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Renewed in knowledge, renewed in perceiving and knowing and recognizing. You know, since I've come to understand this, I no longer feel threatened or afraid like I used to. 
when I can't perceive it, I, I can't connect with it. Oh, Lord, what have I done wrong? Oh, Lord, please forgive me, forgive me. Oh, please, Lord, don't leave me. Oh, please, Lord, don't set me aside. I used to pray like this. Mercy of God, what he had to put up with with me because of my ignorance. But then he opened the scriptures to me and set me free from all those silly fears. But my, those fears were real and tormenting and horrible. And I suffered with these horrible fears because I didn't know that Jesus, who is my life, renews me, renews me inwardly. You see, Jesus abides in me by constantly renewing me in knowledge renewing me in knowledge in 2 Corinthians, I mentioned it to you, chapter 3, verse 17 and 18. And the Lord is spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, emancipation, freedom. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom from the old sin nature. But we all with an unveiled face beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord are being so important, transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Oh, my dear friends, onwards and upwards, Christian soldiers, there is more mountains of glory to conquer in Him. There's more wonders of His beautiful, loving nature to discover in you. In you, God can do nothing apart from what He can do in you. God wants to do it in you and through you and for you and for His own glory until you come to the end of all that God has done where He becomes all in all of us. Oh, my dear friends, I'm so grateful that I know this. I know there's so much more and I love living in the spirit of faith in my loving Heavenly Father and not nag Him. Oh Lord, when, when, and why not? And what have I done? And I, no more of that, no more, no more complaining in His presence. No more, I wanna say, Father, thank you. Thank you, you have brought me thus far by your grace and mercy. You have been so merciful not to fail me. Your love never fails. You've been so compassionate and forbearing. You've never left me. You're always with me and you're renewing me inwardly from one degree of your glory to another, that I may know you inwardly, that I may be renewed the knowledge of you, that I may perceive you in me. Oh, Father, I thank you for all the grace and glory you give me in Christ. Father, I worship you. Oh, come on, let our hearts mount up and our hands to God in praise and see him reveal more of himself in us than ever before, amen. Have a good day.